Hello, I am Dr. Krishna Koirala, PhD surgeon from Pokhara. Today I will be describing on basic X-rays in otolaryngology. So we will be basically discussing about X-rays of ear, nose and throat. So let's start with the X-rays of ear. Most important for you for the exam, the X-rays of ear is only mastoid X-rays. So that too, plain X-ray of the mastoid. Okay, lateral oblique view. This is very important. Why lateral oblique view? X-ray mastoid. This is because two mastoids, as you know, mastoid at the, and the inner ear are the densest bones in the body. So inner ear is densest bone. Therefore, if you simply do lateral views, there will be uh, the, the two views will collide together. So there will be superimposition of the images that will be not visualized because X-ray as a vehicle becomes as white. Therefore, to avoid that, we do lateral oblique views so that we can see. Uh, one side permanently and next side permanently and we'll see on the opposite side. So there is plain X-ray of mastoid lateral oblique and that lateral oblique can be taken at different angles 15, 30 and 45 degrees. So basic for us is you can basically do on 30 degree which is most commonly accepted. So plain X-ray lateral oblique view you told you should tell in the exam. So there is some X-ray also called as town's view which is not important for your examination point of view, we will be basically giving just uh, one x-ray. So in the nose, we will be having different x-rays, but the most common x-ray in the nose will be plain x-ray again of nose and paranasal sinuses, water's view. Water's view basically refers to that ox as occipital mental view, occipital mental view, okay, occipital mental OM view, okay, this is the most commonly performed x-ray in the nose. In nose, there are some other x-rays, uh, basically the lateral x-rays also okay plain x-ray of the soft tissue nasal bone lateral view which is commonly performed for fractured nasal bone okay and if you sometimes see any like want to look up for anybody's then you can see the oblique views but most important being x-ray of nose and pns water's view and plain x-ray of nasal bone okay lateral view for fractured nasal bones if you suspect the x-ray uh, fracture then uh, Suppose sometimes AP viewers require when you have some foreign body, suspect some foreign body in the nose. Then in the throat, the commonly performed X rays are, as you see in the X ray view box, that is mostly plain X ray of soft tissue neck. Okay, soft tissue neck lateral view. This is soft tissue neck lateral view. And even AP views also, they are the commonly performed X rays uh, for the, the neck. Okay, so important thing in the uh, neck why ap and lateral because you know ap and ap and lateral views are the compensative views compensative views sometimes if you simply do ap views you might not actually find out the location of foreign body where is it okay and if you like do lateral views you can find out the association in with the cervical body what is this very important because the esophagus starts with the lower after the lower border of c6 vertebrae okay c6 vertebrae therefore you should know the level where the foreign body is uh, like lying that is very important and sometimes in nasal pharynx plain x-ray soft tissue nasal pharynx okay that will be on extension of the uh, neck that is usually performed by adenoids if you suspect adenoids in children especially so you have to do plain x-ray soft tissue nasal pharynx lateral view on extension for adenoids okay then x-ray chest as you all of you know it is usually performed chest x-ray okay pa views pa views is sometimes performed if you suspect some foreign body in the brain go towards the abdomen okay sometimes when the patient comes with history of foreign body injection and you don't see the foreign body then sometimes sometimes okay x-ray of abdomen and pelvis so chest Abdomen, pelvis, CAP is also performed to find out the location of foreign body in the instrument or in the intestines. That is not, uh, does not fall under our category, but you should at least be able to tell the patient that there is no foreign body in your whole abdomen. That is very important. Suppose when the patient has undergone trigastomy, okay, and you think that the trigastomy is not in place or it's in place when the patient has been, patient is suspected of having surgical emphysema, then also you have to do x-rays. At that time, when the patient is in metallic trigastomy tube, you can see the metallic trigastomy tube along with the air in between the soft tissue planes that signifies when the patient, if the patient is having cervical like surgical emphysema or not. They are commonly, like sometimes asked x-rays in the exam. 
So to start with, how to read the X-rays of ear, nose, and throat? So X-ray, first you have to tell which X-ray is either plain or contrast X-ray. In the exam, you are usually given the plain X-rays, not the contrast ones. Usually given plain X-rays, okay? But if sometimes you are given contrast, then they will be obviously visible as the contrast X-rays. Like for us, contrast X-rays for ENT, contrast X-rays shall be uh, the billion solo of the cephalus, billion solo. Sometimes those of the pistons have been suspected having some uh, lung standing for everybody or having suspected some, uh, some esophageal disease like mobility disorders. Okay, then you have to do other uh, x-rays. Otherwise, not very much required. And for some individual gland, when the patient is having some, some individual salivary dentist or salvithiasis, then you have to do some uh, like contrast x-rays. Okay, that's called sialogram. So they are common contrast x-rays. Then how to read the non-contrast x-rays? So, so first, you have to look for the plane or contrast, that is plane x-ray. Then side of, suppose, if it is from nose, then nose and PNS. Then view. I understood first plane or contrast, then sight, then view. So for the for example, if I am reading this X-ray, I have to read this is the plane X-ray of the soft tissue neck lateral view. Now, so you have to read whatever structures are uh, usually seen there, normal structures. Suppose then plane X-ray, soft tissue neck in lateral view, showing the mandible. This is the mandible. This is the maxilla and nose. These are teeth, and this is the cervical vertebral body. Okay, cervical vertebral body. Then soft tissue anterior to the cervical vertebral bodies. Then ear shadow. Okay, this is the hyoid bone. So these are to be told for first. You have to tell the normal structures and the upper part of the chest. So these are the normal things you have to first tell. Do not never ever go for the findings. The tendency in the exam will be showing this and this. So don't tell me the normal instructions and showing the positive things. Never do that. First, do the, do the normal things, then go to the pathology. Suppose when there is something, then go to the pathology. Okay? That is very important for you. So I hope you are clear till now. Then we'll proceed with the sample x-rays that will be asked in the exam. So first, let's start with this x-ray. Okay? This x-ray is the plain x-ray of soft tissue neck lateral view. This is the soft tissue neck lateral view okay, along with the bone. And this is the AP views. As I have already told, both lateral and AP view are the complementary views. In neck, you have to always perform two x-rays, that is AP and lateral views. So what do you see over here? So this is the face, lower part of the face, that is the mandible, and this is the maxilla. And this is the cervical vertebral body along the spine. These are the ribs, this is the upper part of the chest. So here, there is uh, not much positive finding in the AP views. Most of the times, there will be not much positive finding of AP views. But if you, if you go towards the lateral view here, then you will see this is the mandible again. Okay, upper, upper aspect, that is lower part of the face. Then this is the neck and the upper part of the chest. So here, this is the mandible. This is the hyoid bone. Okay, they are the cervical body, bodies which have been slightly straightened. This is slightly straightened, otherwise, there will be some form of uh, curving of the cervical vertebral bodies. Okay, so that is fine. This is the skull. Then, the positive finding over here is the first, there is the cervical uh, straightening of the cervical vertebral bodies, and next finding is there is something over here. So, this is the radio opaque shadow. Small radio opaque shadow can be visualized okay, on the entry aspect of cervical vertebral body. One, two, three, four. Five, so three, four, and five. So probably this primary lies in the pyriform sinus. The next thing is, as you can see, entered into the thyroid cartilage. Okay, so this probably is the foreign body which is lying lying in the pyriform sinus. So here it will be difficult to visualize the foreign body in pyriform sinus. If it was bone like very dense bone, then you could have visualized, but it's difficult to visualize. So this is the foreign body in the pyriform sinus. Okay, so. Next question is how to remove this foreign body. So foreign bodies are removed with the instruments under either general or local anesthesia. For most of the times we perform rigid esophagoscopy and foreign body removal under general anesthesia. There are certain complications of foreign bodies in the esophagus, certain complications. Suppose the foreign body is sharp that might penetrate the esophageal lumen and go towards the other aspects, sometimes the media is and also, or there might be perforation of the esophagus by sharp foreign bodies. When the foreign body is standing for longer time, they might lead to retrophagenesis. So might be inflammation, might
might be abscess, okay, or might be traumatic penetration of the or perforation of the esophagus. So they are common complications of the foreign body when they are lying in the esophagus or sometimes when they are removing the foreign body, then the instrumentation itself might lead to complications like perforation, trauma are common things. So cervical or esophageal perforation is one of the, although it's common, uh, but it's more or less uh, risky in comparison to the esophageal, like thoracic esophageal perforation because when the patient develops thoracic perforation, then they will be Okay, when the patient develops a cervical esophageal perforation or tear, then there might be surgical emphysema, which is less uh, severe in comparison to the, the thoracic esophagus. So, the next x ray, this is a very commonly asked x ray in the exam. Again, same thing, this is the plain x ray of soft tissue neck, epi and lateral views. Okay, so while we look uh, by the F, this is just two years, this is very important. You have to always look at the, at the uh, bottom edge of the patient, okay, edge of the patient. And next is side, which side, right or left? This is the arm, means right side. Okay, so this is very important. So. Most of the time, whatever is written is on the right side. So this is R stands for right. Okay. So right and left side. This is not very important for us because we are looking at the round for anybody. So, but S is important. Two years male. So most of the times, for anybody is going at, uh, they are ingested by children. Okay. Either by children or when the person is on psychiatric, like psychiatric problem, person having psychiatric problem. Okay. Or sometimes negative things or sometimes I think with the uh, for anybody is like coins, they might, they might swallow. So this is the plain x-ray of, again, soft tissue neck, AP view, showing the round radio apex shadow in the midline, okay? There is probably a coin in the esophagus or any like round substance, round substance, so radio apex round substance, probably, probably most of the time it's coin. So if you look on the lateral view, so this is the lateral view. So this, this foreign body, again, there is a radio opaque shadow. There's a radio opaque shadow, white shadow in the esophagus at the level of one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So starting at the entry border of the C7. Okay, entry border of C7, so like a body bra. So this is probably a point because, see, if you compare these two, this is round, okay? So the face of the coin is probably on the, this side and the edge of the coin is on that side. So, so face and the edge can be seen, face can be seen on the AP, okay, and the edge can be seen on the lateral So it's probably a coin in the esophagus. Then suppose when you uh, see that the, the, there is some form of edema, you have to compare here, if there is swelling or edema or the pre of tissues, then you have to suspect Redefined abscess. In this case, it is normal. So usually, what do you compare is this is the cervical body, body. This one, and you have to just go forwards to it. Yeah, and this will be the soft tissue shadow over here should be less than two third of the corresponding cervical body. body. Corresponding cervical body, body. This is very important. Corresponding, okay? Corresponding. So this is less than two thirds. So there is no infection or no inflammation or abscess formation. And this is the trachea. Okay, this trachea, which is the airway, is normal over here. So again, this foreign are also removed by rigid esophagoscopy and foreign body removal under general anesthesia. So sometimes coins can be even removed by the flexible endoscopes, flexible without the patient being uh, given general anesthesia. Okay, this is uh, all about the foreign bodies in the esophagus.